Hey guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we are talking about worm fishing. Now this is not going to be like other worm videos that we've done. We do videos for you guys all the time and we talk about the fact that we're throwing this worm in the winter, or this worm in the summer, or this worm today because it's cloudy. But we've never actually sat down and just fully dug in, not to the specifics, not to why I'm throwing a trick worm today or why I'm throwing a robo worm that day, but into the specifics of the worms themselves. What is the deal with the plastic worm? Why are there so many on the market? Why is there so many different ways to rig it? And how do you know when to throw each style? Because literally there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different worms. But really, if you step back and look at the entire worm category, I come up with five styles of worm. And I use those five styles for very different things. So that's what I wanna run you guys through right now. We're gonna look at the five styles of worm and understand why we use each one and what that one is for. And then I'll give you some basics on the rigging, the rods, colors, that sort of thing along the way. But to kick it off, I just want to break down the five styles. First one is going to be that curly-tailed worm or that ribbon-tailed worm. And that could be a big power worm like this. That could be a little tiny finesse worm with a curly tail on it. But what is that style worm for? Now again, this is not the end-all be-all of worm videos. This is my opinion. But I'm going to tell you what I use it for. The curly tail style worm is what I use when those fish are just down in the dumps. They're just sitting on bottom, don't want to move, but you know where they are. You don't need to cover a lot of water. I like to just drag those worms. Personal preference. There are plenty of people that flip them into heavy cover and do things like that, but I don't like them for that because those tails get caught up on everything. So for me, that's a bait that I'm going to be dragging bottom with almost always throwing that thing on a Texas rig or a Carolina rig and just slow pulling it. Doesn't matter if it's a 10 inch worm or a four inch worm, that's my application for that style. And you can lump a hundred different baits into that style. Second style is gonna be the stick worm. Your main bait of course is the Senko. Now we've done videos on the dozens of different ways that you can rig a Senko. But obviously the number one method is weightless. The stick bait, the true magic behind the stick bait is the fall. That slow, methodical fall to bottom. That is what makes it stand out from the others. Now can you do a hundred different things with it? Can you put it on a shaky head? Can you throw a smaller version on a Ned head? Absolutely, you can do so many things. But if you're gonna categorize it, you reach for this, when you want that slow fall. Whether that's slow fall and heavy cover, or whether you're throwing it off the ends of long tapering points in a clear water fishery, where the fish are gonna look up and see it and come out to get it. But anytime you want that slower fall, that's the one that's gonna shine for you. Third category, now this is a very broad category. I'm gonna call this all of the shad shaped worms, but that's really not a fair description. It's all of the oddballs. All the worms that have got fins or crazy tails on them or like reaper style worms, anything of that nature. For me, those are typically drop shot baits. Those are baits that I see shine when they're up off the bottom in the water column. And it's because with minimal action, you get an incredible amount of movement out of them. Now you can get that movement out of straight tails and everything else too, it's just a little more complicated. But that style of worm, anything that's got that flat tail or fins on it or anything like that, fish that bait up off the bottom. That's the best place to use it. Next one, straight tailed worms. And I mean, we are flying through this stuff, you guys. I want to make this simple for you. Straight tail worms. And that doesn't matter if we're talking about a little straight tail robo worm, talking about trick worms, all sorts of different options. These worms, to me, you'll notice, even though we call them straight tail worms, almost all of them have some sort 
of a bulbed end on them. It's not truly straight. That's because that's where the little bit of action that they do have comes from. The straight tail worm, that's gonna be your do all worm. Do everything. And you'd be amazed how much water they can actually move. Now, if I could only pick one way to rig them, it's a shaky head, no question. You could Texas rig them, drop shot them, Carolina rig them, you can do everything. But if I'm reaching for a shaky head, I'm putting a straight tail worm on it 99% of the time. You'd be amazed what a worm like this, this is a fat baby finesse worm. It looks like nothing. Looks like you'd put that on a shaky head, throw it in the water, and it'd just be a bullet going to the bottom. That's not the case. These baits swim to bottom. When you rig them on a lighter weight head, they actually swim. It's an amazing action. It's incredibly unique. I don't think there's anything else outside of the plastic worm that really imitates that action and fish are all about it. How many times have you fired a worm out there, given it slack to go to bottom, reeled up and there was already a fish on it? Well, that's because your worm wasn't a bullet going to bottom. It actually looked good on the way down. Those fish come out and get that thing. So keep that in mind. The straight tail worm, while it has very little action as a genre, specific worms look really, really good, especially on the shaky head. Last style worm is going to be, the, I'm gonna call it a speed worm as a category, because I don't know what else to call it. But these guys, a speed worm, cutter tail, anything that's got that hooked tail on it. It's very different than a curly tailed worm. See how that curly tailed worm just hangs back and it'll just sort of drag and wiggle in the water. Speed worms or cutters, they don't do that. These worms, you can fish them slow and treat them just like they're a straight tailed worm. But then when you go to reel them back to the boat, they flat out look like a swim bait. Now you've got to rig them right. I like to throw them on a weighted Texas rig like this. And it does not have to be pegged. It can be pegged or unpegged, that weight. But when you rig Texas like this and you get to the end of your cast and you go to reel it out of there, I mean, it truly, it looks like a swim bait in the water. That tail's back there just thumping. And I wish I could show you some underwater footage of it, but I didn't have any stockpiled and our water right now is muddy. But muddy water is actually a prime time for this bait because you do get so much movement and so much vibration. One falling to bottom and two coming back to the boat that you can get a lot of bonus bites that you couldn't get on the other styles of worm. And I think this style is incredibly overlooked. For years and years and years, I fished the California Delta very heavily. And the Delta is just like a Delta system anywhere else. Tidal fishery, moving water, typically murky, and hands down, my number one bait was that style worm right there. A speed worm or a cutter tail because I could flip it into shallow cover and it would swim down. Then I could fish it on bottom almost like you could a shaky head, just work that bait. And then when I'd reel it back out, I could get that swim bait style bite. And it worked for so many different things that it was hands down my most consistent option and I think it's very heavily overlooked in the market. Very few people use them and I think very few, few people use them correctly. So the actual styles of worm are very simple. Now down in the video description we always link all our gear. This video is no different but what I'm going to do is I'm only going to choose, I'm going to choose my favorite two worms from each of the five categories. My favorite two curly tail worms, my favorite two stick worms, you know, etc. to make it really easy for you. Now, as far as color goes, locally, you'll have huge variants in color. You know, you might have a specific fishery where they love a certain color. They love June bug or something. But as a whole, if you have something in the green pumpkin realm, you've got something in the black blue realm, you're pretty good. Uh, there's something special when you're finesse fishing about both the shad colors and the purple colors, but generally black and blue 
and green pumpkin can get you through almost anything across the country. And then again, rigging you keep very, very simple. You know, the drop shot baits, baits that are gonna be up off the bottom. We've done dedicated videos on all these, but given a choice, I prefer a nose hook because you're gonna get the maximum amount of action out of that worm. If you Texas rig, if you're around cover, you have to do a Texas rig drop shot. But if you're not, a Texas rig takes up so much of the worm that you lose a lot of action. A nose hook is the way to go. Um, and then shaky heads, we keep our shaky heads really simple. But again, if it's as light a weight as you can get away with for that shaky head, and I really prefer a screw style shaky head, just holds the bait so well. But if you get a lighter one, you're gonna get more swim on the way to the bottom, and you're not going to get snagged up in the cover nearly as much. But see that screw? I mean, it really holds a worm. Just poke that through, and just barely expose that hook point. That's all you have to do. And then, you know, Texas rigging, very simple. And I'm not going in, in depth on any of this. Um, but you know, put a Texas style weight on, a sliding weight on the line. You can either put a peg above it or not, doesn't matter. Then all you do is come through the head of the bait, about a quarter inch, stab out the side, push that all the way up to the top of your hook. And then I like to line it up so I can see. And then I'm gonna stab all the way through that worm and then I like to just skin hook back on the other side. So simple, such a deadly way to fish and so easy. I mean, it's one of the first things you learn in bass fishing and you're gonna hold on to it until the day you die because you catch so many fish doing it. And then worming rods, of course, are going to vary a ton right along with the worms, but sensitivity uh, is, is a key factor, especially in the cooler months. You wanna get the most sensitive combo that you can afford. Uh, but the trick is, if you can't afford a really sensitive combo, get a rod that's a little bit longer. We've talked about this a lot, deflection and a rod being critical. So I prefer to throw a worm on anything from say a seven foot up to maybe a seven two, seven three, seven four. Uh, and I've changed over the years, but that's what I prefer now, little bit, shorter more in that mid-range than I used to but that's I think because I've been able to purchase more sensitive rods in recent years and I've not needed that deflection as much but if it's an issue get a little longer rod get a rod on that 7.4 to 7.6 range and then as you're pulling that bait on the bottom watch the rod and you'll see it deflecting you'll see the tip bending when you pull the worm and you can get a feel for how much it should be bending. And if you go to move it and it bends more than it should, set the hook. You don't have to feel the bite. It's deflecting for whatever your worm weighs, 3 16 of an ounce. And then all of a sudden you go to pull and it loads, that's because there's a fish on there. Hit them. If it turns out you were hung up in grass, it'll just pop out. It doesn't matter. So swing on it. But that is a huge trick where you can throw rods that don't cost anywhere near as much and you can still catch a lot of those fish because you're gonna see it before you can feel it. You guys, keep worm fishing as simple as you can. It's a huge category. Everyone has a favorite brand, but you don't have to do that. You really break it down to five styles, be really methodical about it. You know, your total investment into worm fishing does not have to be very much because you could cover all five styles in two colors. And I mean, it doesn't cost you much at all. It costs you less than a couple of swim baits and you are covered for everywhere in the country year round. Uh, it's a great way to fish. It's a great way to catch numbers and it's a great way to catch giants. So keep it simple, stick to those basics, basic colors, basic actions. You're gonna do great this year. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.